Hi everyone, how you doing? Good to see you all. So we're on the very last week of our Cyprus travels, aren't we, Beb? We are, we fly back tonight. We do. And this is our very last episode of our Cyprus 2024 series. There's been about six episodes in this series, including the hilarious Gary getting a show. <laughs> so if you haven't seen that, get yourself down in the uh, description and I'll put a link there. So this week we headed off somewhere that's normally quite party party central, <laughs> isn't it, Bab? Where did. did we go? We went to Iron Apple. We did, and Gary's been there before, haven't you? I have, but never to never to party, but I was based here, so he, well <laughs> <laughs> he says that. Um, but uh, we headed off to somewhere we were absolutely incredible. We went to this sculpture park oh, and it's it's it was great, wasn't enormous, it? It isn't was it? Lovely. Well talk about enormous, there were so many booths I didn't know where to look. <laughs> you didn't know where to look, Gary, to be perfectly honest, doink. Um, <laughs> He wasn't like that, he wasn't like that. But there is an awful lot of booths. There's as many booths as there was down in the Getty Mansions of Winkles. So there is a lot of booths in this. So be warned. So we've come to the Iron Apple Sculpture Park and apparently it's a cactus park as well. We're going to have a good look around and it's just outside of uh, Iron Apple Town Centre, isn't it, Bab? Yeah, just to the east of the town centre it is. Um, now, there looks like there's a lot of sculptures here and it faces the sea, as you can see, it's right behind us. And there is actually some toilets here as well. So if, like me, you're always needing a tinkle, lucky for you, there's a toilet block. And it's really clean. 10 out of 10 for the toilets. So the sculpture park was opened on the 10th of May 2014. And it was opened by the Mayor of Ayanapa. And it's the municipality's way of promoting art and culture. There's over 250 sculptures on this 20,000 square metre plot. And over 155 different artists have taken part in this. So you've got the pavilion and the toilet sort of in the centre. And then the sculpture park goes down towards the coast, both sides. And there's a massive car park that you can park in for free. This is a, an amazing free attraction. Oh, there's some right strange ones. So this one's called Siren. It's called Siren. I don't know about Siren. Looks like she just heard a siren. Look at that look. <laughs> There's lots of boobs here. <laughs> so this one's called The Woman Vision Between Reality and Fantasy. And it was um, sculpted in 2018 by Nazir Rashid from Egypt. I'm not really sure what it's saying, but that looks like a happy place. <laughs> this one's bubble number nine from someone from China. And uh, so there must be one to eight somewhere at least. There's even a drinking water fountain as you're going around as well. That's brilliant. I like this one. Even from a distance, you can probably tell what this is called. I don't even need to read it. I bet it's called Trojan Horse. The soldiers up there on this big horse. Oh, wow. This one. This one's called The Birth of Love, and it's from an artist from Belarus. Isn't that gorgeous? It actually looks, they've made a love heart out of themselves. That's beautiful, Gary. We should do that. <laughs> It's a real place of love and peace and birth. It's absolutely beautiful and I think they're going to just continue to grow it. Uh, you've got to come and stop here if you get the chance. I absolutely loved that sculpture park, didn't you? It was yeah, it was brilliant. Amazing. So then we decided we were going to head off down to the harbour and uh, have a bit of lunch. It was quite pricey but it was nice and have a bit of a walk and then we also found somewhere really unusual. Have a look at this. We've just driven past a sign that says caution, drive on the left. So obviously people don't realise it's the same as the UK here. Coming into Iron Apple Town Centre. And it seems really quiet. So it's definitely out of season here. Hopefully we can get uh, something to eat though. So there's some public parking down by the seafront. We're just trying to find it here. Very cobbled. Your destination is on the left. There you go. Satnav's driven us in, thank you for that. This is a restaurant called Vessos that we're sitting at and uh, Gary's ordered, what, seafood linguine or something again? Seafood linguine, yeah, with spaghetti. Oh, with spaghetti. <laughs> and uh, I've got some sea bass coming and it, it's quite dear, isn't it? It's about 20 euros for yours and 20 euros for mine, maybe 22 for mine. Or as views go, that's pretty good. Look at that. It's a lovely restaurant. It's quite pricey though. 
So it's out of season at the moment. It's really different than normal, isn't it, Gary? It's very quiet here at the moment, yeah. It's normally not this quiet. You could almost say that it's like a, a town of sort of two halves, isn't it? It's almost like it's the party town in the summer, but then more of a retirement sort of place, I suppose, you know, right now, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very quiet. It doesn't get much fresher than this. You've kind of got all the lobsters and things in the uh, tank. We're not actually eating a lobster, but uh, yeah, very, very fresh fish. I've seen they've got um, lobsters in the fish tanks inside there, Gary, and loads of fresh fish and everything. So they're on the menu. Are you they? can actually go in there and pick your own fish or pick your own lobster from the tank. How much is it? So the lobster is 103 euros per kilo. 103 per kilo? Oh my God, I don't know. How much do you think an average lobster weighs then? I don't reckon it'll be a kilo. I reckon it'll be just under a kilo for an average lobster. Do you reckon, what, 2.2 pounds? Yeah, I reckon. I, I don't know, they, they'd be weighing them with a shell on and everything. Oh, I'm sure they would. You know, oh, yeah. gosh. Weigh them with a shell and it'll give you half of that. So, probably the worst thing about me is I can never work out which table I want, can I, babe? Never. We're on table number three because I was cold over there. I was boiling over there and I'm sort of halfway here. So, it's a little bit, a bit like Goldilocks, aren't I? With the three tables I should be all right now I'm gonna to have to put up with it even if even if I do feel a bit weird I'll have to just stay here now because we've been mucking about yeah got them to move our table three times <laughs> so lovely though what a nice day for it as well isn't it Bab? That's gorgeous here, isn't it? yeah really hungry as well aren't we <laughs> yes. here's our dishes now my sea bass is in parchment I've got some rice and salad and Gary's got an amazing seafood salad seafood platter that looks really good, Gary. Wow. Of course, as it's Cyprus, we've got the obligatory cat. Unfortunately, they whipped my skin away of my fish. I would have quite happily given him it, really. Was it in the end, babes? Uh, 52 euros and 10 cents. So, 50 euros, 52 euros, that's not too bad. Just, just under 50 pounds, I suppose. But it is quite fancy here, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. Though. It was worth it. It was good, wasn't yeah. it? So, this is Ironapa Harbour, and we've just eaten at that restaurant just over there. And here you go, you've got the infamous Black Pearl. It's a party ship, you reckon, isn't it, Gary? It is, yeah. It does the trips up to, up the coast, along to Varosha and back down again. Oh, I can only imagine those drunken party nights. <laughs> I don't do them anymore. Here we go, look at the flooring as well. It's lovely. It's a really beautiful harbour. It's completely different than what I expected. Ayanapa is really calm in out of season, isn't it? Yeah. Beaches in Cyprus and the water's so clear. Look how clear that water is there. There's like a big pot there, Gary. Oh, I've got another puss here. Hello. Another Cypress cat. What's your name? Hmm? Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm getting a stroke on the leg. Oh, I think our house sitting cat will be able to smell that, won't he? <laughs> I think he might. <laughs> I think I've been out having an affair on him. <laughs> start of a two kilometre boardwalk as well it's recently completed by all accounts and it goes all the way from the sort of town centre along right along the coast beautiful really nice family walk so there's an extra little piece of the walkway that you can go to and it gives you a lookout point and over in the distance there seems to be a, a really unusual building it looks like it's leaning and then there's sculptures and everything along the walkway. It's annoying that whenever there are some beautiful things done for people, there's always bloody graffiti everywhere. This bit says, come to Limassol. <laughs> but there's just all the way this lovely wall. It's quite new as well. It's so gorgeous. They're kind of ruining the look for everyone. I mean, the care that's gone into building this place, there's mosaics even on the bin. And then people take the time to do this. But what a beautiful location. Plenty of romance in Ayanapa. There's a love heart that's been put in the stones over there. This is just on the walkway. It's a lovely place. Wow. Look at this sculpture, Icarus. It's amazing. Wow. That beautiful, Gary. It's lovely, isn't it? And it's all, it's in its own sort of garden setting. And I reckon they must light this all up at night. It's just by the side of the boardwalk. So we're heading up to the square from the beach. But as you can see, it's really quiet. Most things are shut up. And it's about quarter past three on a Saturday. So here you got what will be massively busy tavernas in the summer, I should imagine. All closed up, really. They might be open in the evening. 
but it probably won't be worth their while opening at lunchtime. Oh, there's a this one that looks like Santorini, Gary. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the Greek taverna. The Greek, it's, what's it called? Costas the Greek. Oh, Costas the Greek, <laughs> of course it is. Oh, it's been boarded up though. Oh, wonder why it's been boarded up. Somebody must have smashed it. But there's some really interesting buildings. Look at that one. That's a Da Vinci restaurant. That's a great building, isn't it? Buy, sell, real estate, Cyprus. Oh, that's the um, estate agents that you see online. Tommy's Pub. Farmer's traditional taverna. So this, this, I bet this high street is rammed in the summer. Oh, look at this. The Iron Upper. I love Iron Upper sculpture, Gary. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Oh gosh, we're going right up it. It's very much up a steep hill though. The town, isn't it? It is, isn't it? I bet you, you can't move for people in the summer. But this is it out of season in a January. There's nobody around really. Just a couple of kilometers outside of Ayanapa, you've got the Musan, which stands for the Museum of Underwater Sculpture of Ayanapa. By all accounts, there's absolutely loads of sculptures underneath the water out here. So we're at Muzan, and uh, this is the, the world's first underwater sculpture park, isn't it, Bab? It is, designed by Jason de Carras Taylor. Yeah. Um, and it was basically part of the rewilding of the seabed. Now, there are 93 sculptures, some figurines and trees, mm -hmm. all pH neutral, so it doesn't actually ruin uh, the water, sort of contaminate the water. And the reason I've done it there is so that so that algae and reefs will build upon them. Now they're, uh, they're sunk at depth between eight and 10 meters. So that's good for snorkelers as well as divers. And apparently it's really well received in the area and it's a world site for underwater scuba divers. So if you go through this walkway here, you'll go directly to where the sculptures are inside the sea. That's quite incredible, isn't it? Is that sculpture park underwater though? Oh, I would have loved to have actually gone in and yeah. seen it. Yeah, me too. I would have really enjoyed that. Well, that's it for us um, in Cyprus. It's also us for this week. Next week, you're going to see us back in the van. <laughs> yeah. We can't wait. Now, we're not heading off to Europe just yet. In fact, we know when we're heading off to Europe and we'll share that with you in our next video. Um, but we will be back in the van. There's a lot of stuff we need to do on that van, but we can't wait to be in there, can oh, we? Oh, no, I really missed it. Yeah, really missed the it. old van. But we've loved our trip to Cyprus. Um, thank you very much for watching, everyone. We really love having you along. Um, don't forget to give us a like if you enjoyed this, maybe even a comment because it really helps the, the channel to grow when you do that. And even the Holy Grail of itself <laughs> gives us a subscribe, y'all. <laughs> See you next time, everyone. Love you loads. Take care. Ta-ra.